Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm the King Live, and today we're going to be breaking down five incredibly common mistakes that low elo players make pretty much every game. There are actually a lot of things that separate a high elo player like Tens and Mordell from lower elo players. When people think of top tier players, generally what they think of is just good aim. But having good aim is only half of it. You need to make sure that you're constantly doing what you need to be to set yourself up to land those shots. You can't bake a cake without adding all of the ingredients first. So we're going to break down all those ingredients for you today, so stick with us and let's get into it. Before we start this video though, I want to introduce the question of the day, which is, what do you think is the most common mistake low elo players make? Maybe it's even something we didn't mention in this guide. Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Now, starting off the guide, the first common mistake low elo players make is not creating enough pressure on the map. This is primarily a mistake that players make on offense, but it's also something players can struggle with on defense. If you don't understand what I mean by creating pressure though, that's okay. I'm going to break it down for you really easily so that we can fix this issue. Basically, the problem with only creating pressure in one place on the map in Valorant is that it makes it very easy for defenders to rotate and even out the odds for your team. Valorant is a 5v5 game, but the disadvantage the defenders have is that they are required to spread out their players to defend against an attack from the offense. Optimally, when the offense executes onto a site, they want it to be a 5v2 or a 5v3. But have you ever had those rounds where it feels like every single time you execute onto a site, it seems to be a 5v5? This is because your team does not have enough pressure on the map. You need to remember that the enemies are constantly responding to every single thing that you do in the game. If you're running, they will hear that and call it out. If you drop a smoke, they will see that and they will call it out. If you throw a flash, a recon, anything you do, they will be reacting to. Now, the extent of their reaction will vary, obviously, but you need to be taking advantage of this and creating pressure on individual spots of the map. Otherwise, when you execute onto a site, the enemies will only have one thing to react to, and it will likely make your life more difficult. The same thing works on defense, though. What a good defender will do is if they see the enemy team is creating a lot of pressure in one place, they know this means that they are giving up pressure in another place. This allows the defenders to push up more and grab more territory for their team so they can make a more educated decision within the round. This extra territory is incredibly beneficial if the attacking team ever tries to rotate back towards a different site because now all of the territory they originally started the round with now needs to be retaken. Nobody likes using flashbangs to clear their spawn, so do yourself a favor and start the round by creating some pressure on the map. On that note, if you guys are serious about improving, I really want to recommend checking out all the things we have to offer on skillcap.com. We have up-to-date lineups for agents, courses on all the mechanics needed to win more gunfights, smurf commentaries where a high-ranked player walks you through how to carry in your rank, and so much more. Come join over half a million satisfied members on Skillcapped, improve that KDA, and get that rank that you've always wanted at skillcapped.com. Link in the description below. Moving on, the second mistake that low elo players make is staying in the same place for way too long. Now, I don't mean this individually, but more so as a team. It is incredibly common at lower ranks and even sometimes at higher ranks for players to get stuck in different areas of the map. Some common areas you see this happen are hookah on bind or either B or A main on ascent. The main reason this happens is because nobody on the team wants to be the one to initiate a push. So instead, they'll just sit in these positions just hoping to land a kill onto one of the enemies, and in the meantime, they're getting smoked out, hit with shock darts, grenades, maybe even brimstone ulted or mollied. Remember when we said earlier the entire enemy team is reacting to what you're doing? So if their entire team is sitting in hookah and not quickly executing onto site, it gives the enemy team all the time in the world to rotate, and now rather than fighting a 5v2 or a 5v3, you're fighting a 5v5 and your team has very little territory on the map. To counteract this problem, you need to be the one to step up and engage for your team, or you need to lead them with communication and get your duelist to initiate the push quickly. If you give the enemies too much time to adapt to what you're doing, it's going to be a lot easier for them to stop you, so when you make a decision, try to make it quickly and with confidence. Sometimes, even if you make the wrong decision, if you make it as a team with confidence, it can still work out really well. Alternatively, if you've noticed your team is having trouble executing onto sites quickly, it might be better for you to split up and try to look for picks across the map, as the enemy team may be keen to rotate too fast, leaving them weak somewhere else. Moving on to our third mistake that low elo players make though, using utility while exposed. 
This is a really basic rule that is going to save your life in many, many rounds. You should never peek your enemy with utility out. The problem here is that Valorant is a tactical shooter, which means that you as a player will die very quickly in the game. Because of this, you want to limit the amount of time that you are vulnerable to the enemy. The most common agents that have this issue are Sova and Raze because their utility oftentimes requires them to aim it at an enemy's location. But rather than aiming it directly at the enemy, what you want to do is bounce it off of a wall or throw it over a wall so that they do not have a chance to punish you for it. If your gun is not out, you are considered a defenseless target and it will likely result in your death. This is why you need to take your time to get a feel for how long your utility takes to use so that you don't get caught trying to throw a molly or drop a smoke for your team. Remember, you may be able to kill targets with a utility sometimes, but if you're going to see an enemy on your screen, you always want to have your gun out. This is where learning lineups for agents can be really helpful. Learning ability lineups for characters like Sova, Viper, or really any character that requires you to throw a projectile will help you use utility while also keeping you out of harm's way. Moving on to the fourth thing that players struggle with though is not communicating enough. It's very common to play in gold games or below without a single player communicating all game, and honestly, I don't blame players for not wanting to communicate in these games. It's not fun feeling like you're talking to yourself all game or like no one is listening. It is important to remember though that just because players aren't talking doesn't mean they aren't listening. Communication is such a massive thing in Valorant, and if no one is saying anything, it can be really difficult to win. This is why you need to be the person to say everything for your team. An excellent example of somebody who has great comms in solo queue is Hiko. When watching Hiko stream, take note of how he never stops communicating what is going on in the game. Everything that he sees, or even his teammates sees, he will call out in voice chat so that everyone is in the loop of what is going on. In lower ranks oftentimes, you are going to have to be the one to carry the comms. Sometimes it's going to feel like you're talking to a brick wall, but I promise you it will help you win more games. The fifth mistake that low elo players make is having their crosshair too low or too close to corners. I know, I know, you've heard it all before, but what would this list be if I didn't include it? This is oftentimes the easiest to notice mistake that players make, and also the very first thing I teach players who are brand new to the game. There are a lot of things that go into having good crosshair placement, but the most common thing you will hear is to always have your crosshair at head level. Have you heard the phrase work smarter, not harder? That's basically what the purpose of crosshair placement is. Rather than having to move and adjust your crosshair to hit your targets, you want to place your crosshair at the perfect spot where the enemies will just walk into it for you. Many low elo players spend hours in aim labs or Kovacs working on their flicks so that they can land those nasty shots, but when it comes to aiming in Valorant, a large majority of the game is just having good crosshair placement. But there is a lot more that goes into having good crosshair placement than just aiming at the head, so what else should you be focusing on? Now if you're a brand new player, I would recommend just focusing on bringing your crosser up to head level first, but if you're looking to bring your game to the next level, what should you try to improve on? You see, another common mistake low elo players make with their crosser placement is aiming too close to a wall where their enemy is going to come from. The reason this is a bad thing to do is because as humans we have an average reaction time of 215 milliseconds. Meaning that even if you have an above average reaction time, it's going to take a little bit to process that your target has come around this corner in the first place. So if you're aiming too close to a wall, it's either going to cause you to miss your shot or it's going to cause you to have to adjust to your target's head quickly. Now the exact position you should place your crosshair to counteract this is going to vary from person to person because everyone is going to have a different reaction time. However, I recommend aiming far enough from the wall where you feel confident you can react fast enough to land your shots. Now there is actually a lot more that goes into crosshair placement, but it would take me too long to cover it all in just this one guide. But try to remember that where you place your crosshair is always going to be dependent on how the enemy is going to peak the angle. If you believe they're going to full swing the angle, you're going to want to aim further away. But if you think they're going to jiggle peek it or walk past the angle, you might want to aim a lot closer. Let's move on to the sixth mistake that low elo players make though, and this is a big one. In low elo games, it's incredibly common for players to watch their teammates go in and die without being there to trade them. This ties into the lack of communication at these ranks, but as a player, you need to be able to read your teammates' body language and tell when they are about to initiate a play. Notice how in this clip from Hiko's stream, the two players group up for a retake and attempt to enter the site together. They play very close to each other with every step because when one player takes a fight, the other player wants to be there to back them up. If you let your teammate push in alone, then what will likely happen is they will die and you will get nothing out of that fight. Instead, you want to try to make each engagement costly for your enemies. You don't want to lose players on your team without getting a trade and evening out the round. 
Similarly, this brings us to our seventh mistake low elo players make, which is playing as if it's a solo game. Valorant is a team game and you should treat it as such. You have four other players on your team and if you all play together, it's going to make your games infinitely easier to win. What is an example of playing as a team though? A great example of playing as a team is setting up different plays or baits with another player on your team. You don't always need to be grouped up with five people, but oftentimes just having two players group up and take control of showers can really catch the enemy team off guard and result in big plays. One of the major things that a lot of higher tier players focus on throughout the rounds is attempting to take control of the ultimate orbs on the map. Generally, it's very dangerous to push up for these things on your own, but if done with a teammate, it can make it a lot easier to open up the gate for a lot of big plays. Pushing alone can generally be a very risky decision, but pushing as a team not only makes it safer, but it reduces the amount of responsibility that you have for the round. If a player pushes up alone and dies, it feels like they are a detriment to all of the other players on the team. But if you push up as a team and die, at least it was a strategy that you as a team decided to execute, so rather than one player being blamed for the loss of a round, you split the responsibility with your team and you avoid tilting everyone else. Lastly, this takes us to our 8th mistake low elo players make, which is not using their utility enough. Listen guys, the bottom line is your utility is intended to give you options in the round and help you create the most optimal engagements that you can. If you're dying while you still have utility, it's likely that you had options that could have helped you within the round and you just decided not to use them. The piece of utility that this is most apparent with is flashes. Oftentimes you'll see lower ranked players peek around corners and die while they still have two flashes left. If they would have flashed around the corner to begin with, they could possibly still be alive, but because they got greedy and tried to keep them for later in the round, suddenly they ended up getting picked off and now they need to watch the rest of the round from their teammates perspective. Something you'll notice from watching pro players is that they very rarely will finish a round without using all of their utility. Because at the core, they know Valorant is about gunfights, but it's their utility that is meant to make the gunfights as safe as possible for them. There is definitely a fine line between not using enough utility though and using your utility too early. But what I would recommend is if you're a player who finds that they oftentimes still have flashes or smokes left at the end of the round, the next time you queue into game, go into it saying, I'm going to use all of my utility every round and see if it helps you win it all. But that's all we've got for you. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights and get the rank you've always wanted, then you should check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. There are many other mistakes that low elo players make that we weren't able to cover today, but if you guys would like to see a part two in this guide, be sure to drop a like below to show your appreciation. I'm interested to hear what you think is the biggest mistake lower elo players make though, so let us know in the comments below. That's all for us today though. Thanks again guys, my name is the King Live, and we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.